So our final movie review update is going to be the film Good Burger 2. And uh, while we're talking about Good Burger 2, we're also going to be doing a review for the first Good Burger because I have never seen the first Good Burger movie, but Chill has. Uh, but he hasn't seen Good Burger 2, so it'll be interesting to get the two perspectives here on both these movies. Um, so, yes, Good Burger 2. This is a 25-year sequel uh, to the yeah. first Good Burger film. Um, the original characters are back again. Um, you have it where it's uh, Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. Kenan Thompson, who plays Dexter, and Kel Mitchell, who plays Ed. And this was a sketch com. This was a skit originally on the Nickelodeon channel there that got blown up into a movie. It became a kind of a millennial classic, I guess you could say. Good Burger. Like if you were, you know, a kid growing up in the '90s, you probably saw Good Burger and you probably liked it a lot. Um, this sequel, uh, Good Burger 2, is on Paramount Plus. Uh, so if your parents can, or if you have Paramount Plus, you can check it out. This is not in theaters. Um, you think that, you know, maybe that you know, it should have been probably put in theaters, or you think it's fine just being on streaming? No, nah, yeah. They, they, if I, I think they could have pulled it off if it was at a different time. Definitely not after the summer. No, nah, mm. hell no. Nah. Definitely not after the summer. Not this yeah. type of movie. So you see in this movie, in Good Burger 2, 25 years later, uh, you have it where Dex, Kenan Thompson's character, um, you have it where, you know, he's trying to be an entrepreneur, trying to go out there, trying to make a name for himself. And he's failing spectacularly, um, doesn't know what to do. He's getting all this money from all these people, has no way of paying it back. Um, his newest invention he's trying to do, he's trying to do like a fireproof, uh, like liquid or something like that. And, you know what I mean? That ends up failing. Um, so he goes back to what he knows and a person who's always been there for him, Good Burger and Ed. Ed, who you see him, where he's taking over Good Burger. He actually owns the Good Burger he's at. Um, you know, he has all this money now. He has a beautiful family. He's got like what uh, he's got the number of kids that uh, Nick Cannon has now, like 18 fucking kids, um, all named after condiments and uh, vegetables there. Um, so he's living really good. But. You see, Dex is not. They come back together for good old fun again at the Good Burger. Um, but you see that, again, once again, Good Burger is in jeopardy uh, because they have an evil corporation again trying to push up on them and trying to steal it up right up under them um, and basically franchise Good Burger into Mega Good Burger. Um, there. You have Little Real Howry in this, who uh, looks like he's actually dropped some weight, actually. He looks, you know, looks yeah, he dropped a lot of weight, man. Yeah, he dropped looks, a lot of weight. Yeah, who looks yeah, he looks pretty good. Yeah, drop some weight in this. Um, who there who's trying to, you know, hustle uh Good Burger away from them uh and to mm -hmm. franchise it uh there. Um, mm -hmm. so um like I said, Chill, you did not see Good Burger 2, but what are your thoughts on the first Good Burger film? And what were you thinking when they said they were gonna make a sequel to it after all these years? Uh I mean, like I said. Well, like I was kind of disagreeing with I don't know if Good Burger was the hype like that back then. Like um it it, it kind of came off where these were the two most popular people and we were still in that time where we still had you know all that kind of play like a sequel to uh a kid sequel to fucking um what's the damon wayne shit damn it i can't think of it uh def not deaf comedy jam but um what's the sketch comedy show i can't in living color in living color yeah thank you in living color so you know and these two were the most popular motherfuckers on there so it's like and they could have made a movie out of kind of any of their sketches they just kind of chose this one because i guess this was just more you can tell it's more of a pa a passion thing for them and they want to get it right because even with the changes that you said that they make to the second one where you know ed is an owner now and he <laughs> Just making goo gobs a, a, a payoli, you know what I'm saying? Like, but he's still a fucking idiot where he does dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they still try to keep that essence, but um, it also still it still sounds like it's the same concept of Dexter trying to use him, you know what I'm saying? And when this came out, like I said, I think this was just off the hype of the show, all that, and the show, all that was still running strong when this was was coming out too. I think I want to say. Uh, cause I know they, they didn't really, you know, they didn't move on to new cash yet, but I think it was just off of that. Uh, I just don't, like I said, I, I didn't even go see this in the movie theater, to be honest with you. I don't even think I, I remember if I seen this in the movie theater. So it was kind of even hard to even contemplate when I even seen this shit. 
Uh, <laughs> but was I like super excited when like they said they were gonna fucking do this and do a, a sequel? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I felt the same way. Like, oh, okay, that's cool. I mean, I, I feel like one of them is gonna look very weird, and that's what happened. I predicted that, like, because I think I've seen Kill, um, a picture of Kill before that, and he just was looking weird. So, <laughs> got all these goddamn prosthetics on and shit on his fucking face, and it just looks weird, man. But, like I said, um, the first Good Burger, can I say it's a classic film? No. Can I say those are classic characters? Yeah, because it's like. You talking about this picture right here? Yeah, this picture and just seeing him in the movie, like seeing all the reviews, and you know, saying he just looks crazy looking like Michael Jackson right there, man. Kind of right. looks like the black version of Teddy Perkins in Atlanta when they did that yeah, episode, like instead of being all white. <laughs> uh, yeah. That which I, I was like, I don't know why they did. I mean, because I mean, you see the you know, pictures of uh, Kale, he, he's a good looking guy. I mean, he's real good looking. He doesn't like he's aged all that much, really, you know, mm -hmm. since the first one. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't know. It's always. Good Burger has always been a goofy concept, so I don't know. I just don't understand how they would be able to build off of it to make a part two, which is they're kind of just still going the same route as the first one, uh, fighting against a corporation. It sounds like the same shit, the same shit, fighting against corporation. And now that they bring, uh, you know, Ke Keenan back in, now you get to go into, oh, uh, was Ed's life and 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 and, and Dexter's life mixed together now? Like they, they discover each other in the middle of the movie. I bet you that's the middle of the movie, ain't it? I bet you that's all the feel of the movie. It is all about these fucking big corporations going against them. Nah, man, um, fuck this shit. They they pretty much hook up pretty early on in this movie because this movie's only an hour and thirty minutes, so it's pretty pretty mm -hmm. short. Um, so they you know after he fails and you know his invention bombs. Um, then he kind of goes on. It's like, oh, well, I'll go back to, you know, Good Burger there and go work for them and go see Ed. And again, it is pretty much a lot of the same stuff here, the same kind of setup of, you know, Dexter using Ed again, like he did in the first one, where in the first one, you know, he was, you know, trying to, you know, steal his secret sauce, like make a big profit of that and, you know, make a m bunch of money off of him here. He's kind of he doing the. He wasn't oh. even trying to steal it. He was, he was just being shysty as fuck. He was. He was giving him like 10% of the profit made from that shit. Yeah, he's basically yeah, stealing the profits off of the secret yeah. sauce there that helped uh, Good Burger beat Mondo Burger back in the first movie. So he's kind of doing the same thing here where he's trying to like, you know, help franchise the business where Lil Real Howry comes in and he keeps trying to, you know, pressure, uh, you know, Ed to sell the business, to sell it to him. And Keenan Thompson's kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I'll help him sell it so we can make a bunch of money and everybody's going to get raises and it's going to be really good. Obviously, that blows up in their face and obviously they all get fired from that little how he just hustles the business from them and then the main villain in this other than Laura Howery um is a character named Kate who's the older sister or the younger sister I'm sorry the younger sister of the villain in the first movie Amondo Burger there uh, you know and it's played by that actress she was in 21 Jump Street she's been in a bunch of other comedies um, oh, Jelly is or whatever yeah something like that she's she's been in a bunch of you know comedies before people probably seen them before let me see if I can find her in the trailer right here uh but yeah so she's kind of she's the younger her right here uh she's yeah. the you know younger sister of that character so you have you'll hear a lot of uh like references back to the first movie um like you had an old person uh in the first movie now <laughs> there's another old person in this movie here of course they can't bring back uh because ava go because he's dead now he's way he's way mm -hmm. fucking dead they can't bring him back but yeah you know um there's that here um, you have the other crew of there who, you know, the good burger, who's like one of them, who's his son. Um, then you also have like random celebrity cameos in this where it's like, uh, I think Kaisenat Ky is in here. You also have like Gronk, Rob Gronkowski's in here, uh, which is great, which is, which is, I, I think that's, that's one thing that I think make, I mean, I know those young are just cameos. In here. Yeah. Like I don't understand those as just cameos, but uh shit that's cool like to to even have them in that shit that's cool you know what i'm saying like i wish they could have sold this more maybe they could have sold a better story with this shit you know what i'm saying like i don't understand like you you have big faces on that so it's like you had to spend on the budget i know they they didn't they weren't cheap mm, yeah 
Um, yeah, you do, you do got kind of a lot of some, yeah, celebrity candy cam. Pete Davidson also kind of shows up here as well. Um, yeah, why is so, Pete Davidson around kids? <laughs> uh, you know, you kind of got that going on. So, yeah, you'll you'll have a lot of references back to the first movie again. I don't know if you're like a big Good Burger fan and you really love the first one, will you be that interested to see a lot of the gags return again? Is is, is Sinbad enough? No, he's not. He's not in this. Oh, okay. Uh, George Clinton well, makes an appearance, though. He comes back, though. George Clinton. Okay, that's fine. I mean, because they was in, they, so they go to the crazy house again. Uh, no, it's like the gag is like they do like an Imagine parody. You remember they did that whole Imagine thing, like with the celebrities Gail Godot and all those other did like the whole Imagine stuff. It's like a parody on that where they're trying to go and like finding ways to save Good Burger, and they go like, well, let's get a bunch of celebrities to sing a song, and then there's a cameo of other celebrities who kind of come in, and one of them is George Clinton. Man, this shit sound weak as hell, man. No, I don't even want, can I can I can I rate this shit my damn self? I don't even well, want to see this shit. Well, you know, I still do think. I mean, some of the chemistry I still do think is there between uh, Kale and Keenan. I think that's fun. You could tell maybe they're having a lot of fun. You know, being mm-hmm. back again as as these two characters. Um, you know, and and like the, there's a scene here where somebody comes up and to the counter and orders. He says, "Can you serve me a burger?" And he does a tennis rack and he serves them he literally serves them a burger and things like that like so that's kind of kind of funny kind of goofy a little bit that kind of works there i think um and yeah i i mean so if you're into that type of stuff maybe you'll like that maybe it's i mean this is just on paramount plus streaming you know maybe like it, and it's pretty short too and it's just kind of going from a lot of those gags it's just that it does a lot of the same things as the first movie like watching them back to back it just kind of repeats a lot of those same things like Dex is in trouble and he needs money again. Dex is in trouble and he needs money. And again, this one, he's kind of using Ed again and then they have to reconcile and then they have to kind of come back together and then save Dick Burger. That's a lot of the same shit as was the first one was. Um, but, you know, it being kind of updated there, I think it's fine where it is on streaming. Um, there are some OK yeah. gags. And this is the gag I was talking about right here where he literally kind of serves it up to her like that. Which is still a throwback joke because that's what the shit that even this the plunging shit like him fucking with the fucking shakes like this yeah. is this is all a throwback joke to, to what was on the show. Yeah, it, you know he always fucks with that fucking shake machine, <laughs> and he always does that at the counter like in the sketches. Did you used to watch all that back in no, the day? No, I never did. So in all that, that was the whole thing of the sketches. So yeah, I can give you information on that. The sketches will be it'll be Ed and Good Burger doing that shit. Like it'll be like, oh, can I get uh two two patties, no meat, uh, no cheese? Or, like it'll just do something. He just does that wordplay shit back and forth, and they get pissed off, and then you know, say they just eventually <laughs> just run off and shit like that. And then um, it's it's one uh, sketch where he puts himself in the fucking uh, shake machine. Yeah, that yeah. was actually in the first Good Burger movie. There, they did. Yeah, he actually puts himself in the shake machine. He goes around there. Yeah, um, which is also from the show. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you know, I guess if you are somebody who's like they're kind of just recycling the same gags there, that might annoy some people there. Um. But it's just also people just responding to Ed's stupidity is also kind of funny. Like some of the reaction shots are kind of funny there too. Mm-hmm. It does kind of get some tiresome, like the back and forth, like you said, or maybe some of the things there can get tired some people probably seeing it's pretty much overdone at this point because i mean it's whenever you have a sketch that gets brought into a movie it's like you have to expand this concept into an hour exactly. like why, why don't why, why yeah. did why didn't they just like still have them do this stupid shit but then his ass go viral and that shit goes the wrong way it looks too crazy you know what i'm saying like he gets canceled or something <laughs> yeah like he's he's all like so Let's just say the movie starts and part of his wealth and everything like that is he's also an unexpected like social media star. He goes viral for this stupid shit. Like y'all could have kind of built some shit around that where he damn near gets canceled. And maybe that is what forces him to sell fucking good burger and shit like that with the help of Kale trying to help him, you know what I'm saying? F- sell that shit or whatever. Or Kel being like a PR person or some shit, trying to help with his image. You know um, what I'm saying? So I don't know. They kind of do something close to that. There's a segment okay. in here where they kind of play on, like, you know how these, like, you watch them, these food vloggers who go mm-hmm. around to all these different famous spots and eat. So they kind of do some of that where this, like, famous, like, German food vlogger goes to Good Burger 
and then he orders one of them and gets the special sauce. And then he says, like, I'll take sauce on both sides. And then Ed just whips out the big, uh, you know, a condiment and he just sprays the dude with the with the sauce. Like, and he just covers him in all of it. And he kind of blows up off of that a little bit. That's like a gag they do there. Um, and they kind of bring in some kind of modern elements as far as because like what Mega uh, Good Burger is trying to do is they're trying to automate everything, like just replace all the workers with machines. It's like there's nobody working there and everybody's going to be replaced with machines, which is relevant. I mean, that's kind of a cool concept there. It's like, you know, I mean, OK, it's like, what if we just automate everything? And then that's obviously a real concern for a lot mm-hmm. of workers, especially in fast food. Um, but that's not really, I mean, obviously I don't expect a movie like this to go that much into, you know, depth with that subject there, but that's just like, you could have played upon that a little bit more. Um, I think they're, uh, just there, but, um, yeah. Um, so overall, I mean, actually going back and, and watching the first movie, cause I, I had never seen the first good burger before. And I was actually, okay, this is, this is all right. You know what I mean? I kind of get why, you know what I mean? It has the appeal it does, you know, if, if you're just seeing it once. Um, and I think that you know, kill Mich- Mitchell as Ed that kind of does some funny stuff. Like, look at it, he's just dragging a little girl across the con. I mean, who can't laugh at that? That's pretty funny, right? Yeah, but they drag <laughs> on that, they drag that shit, that scene on for like so long. Like, how fucking long we gotta see this motherfucker just rollerblading through the streets? Like, it, that shit went on for like 10 minutes, yeah. And it does play into kind of like maybe frustrations people have with you know, the I mean, fast food and going to these places and. You know, trying to get your order done, and it's like it's just a simple order, maybe, and there's always problems. Like it kind of plays in that a little bit. Um, but the, a lot of what the sequel does is it's trying to follow up too much with the last movie and trying to, you know, again bring in the same people who also who are available for their for this movie. Like they bring back Carmen Electra, who from yeah. the, there's really no purpose for her really to be. There. I mean, I know it's, it, there's kind of a reason she's like the nanny of his kids, but it's like this. You just brought her back just to bring her back. I mean, that's really is like really there. It's just like, hey, we. Wait, she, get- play, she plays a nanny. Um, yeah, she's the nanny of his kids in this. Oh lord. Yeah. Um, he's married to his wife in this. Is the woman? I forgot her name. She's. You ever see the Old Spice commercials? You ever see those? Mm, yeah, the ones with uh, Kit, uh Cole. Yeah, it's yeah, the, it's- Beyond Cole. Yeah, it's her. She's uh, she's the uh, the person. Yeah, she she was in the oh his wife. She was in the game. She uh, that showed the game, and I remember if y'all ever watched the game, she was uh, she was Derwin's girlfriend. I remember her. Yeah, I always remember her. Yeah, um, yeah. So she plays his wife in this. Um, so yeah, for me, I guess I would give it. Uh, I guess a low streaming. I guess a very very low streaming. I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. is, is kind of where I'm at with it. Like, I was actually, I was like, I again, I didn't really hate it, I guess, all that much. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it's perfect finally where it is on streaming where you can watch it, be done with mm-hmm. it if, if you so choose to be. Um, and and kind of that's okay. Um, I, I did chuckle at a couple of things in this. Am I gonna like go back and like, oh, watch it again? Probably not. No, um, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of a very limited kind of concept here that you got got going on that doesn't have i don't think much replay value all that much but yeah just kind of a low stream it for me well i say at least the first one you know you had the the cool shit of uh the good sauce and the mondo burger being built so it's like you know what i'm saying even like you see like i felt like the it felt like this one this new one is like very limited compared to the first one because they had that type of thing going on too where and then they had where uh dexter's character gets fired or leaves or whatever and works at my or he works at mono burger for a little bit before he goes to good burger yeah you know what i'm saying so they had those elements too like so they didn't they didn't do anything special with the food like it ain't event shit no nah, there's no there's no special sauce 2.0 here or nothing like that there's Nah, so what's the point of the content creator coming in there? Um, I guess because he just is like he's like a famous food vlogger guy who just oh, from Germany who just is visiting America and visiting all the spots. Where uh, I don't even remember where is this supposed to take place? Good Burger is I in like in L.A. or something? Or I think it's in L.A., California, some shit. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm telling you, they should have they, they should even made him a franchise owner. They should have made that shit like where Good Burger is one. 
one store. One store, he owns it. He yeah, lives he does. Houston. It's no, not I'm a, saying. No, I'm saying you said it's franchise, like where it's like a whole bunch of them now. No, that's what the villain is trying to do. Little Red. Oh, he's trying, trying to. Do, okay, okay. He's okay. trying to come in and buy it from Ed so he can franchise it. It's still just one oh. good person. Yeah. Oh, okay, what, okay. That's what the villain. Well, fuck me. Well, fuck me then. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, I just, I just feel like that that little social media element could have played big, where you know, not just one content creator, but maybe a couple of content creators like coming in. Like, I understand you, you got casted out in there, but y'all could have used them a little bit better than just making an appearance. Like, you could have just had all them come in there streaming. You know what I'm saying? Like these content creators come over and. Sh- stream over here because he's like uh he's like mini viral like the like the like the last video village you know what i'm saying that's in minneapolis or some shit where the fuck is that you know what i'm saying yeah so i don't know i think they should have they could have made it like that and he could have been like social media famous where you know then that's how he kind of like it and he can still live good he can still live good you won't live in a big house and shit like that you can still do that he'll just be like social media famous on top of that he becomes like a foodie like you know what i'm saying like how the fuck i don't understand it how the fuck is he owning the business he's still stupid <laughs> i mean hey i mean hey he's just stroking genius he's got the special sauce just world famous just keeping the business yes. open um, 25 years yeah so that was good burger uh two 